Welcome to Amusement Sparks, the amateur theme park design podcast. This is the season two remodels and renovations episode, so the wrap up of the past five parks. We're going to be going over this with multiple different guests. Um, my first guest is here. He's probably uh, the most frequent guest on this show. Actually, literally, I don't know why I said probably. Um, Nick, why don't you uh, say something? Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's wonderful to be here as always. And, uh, you know, I just want to say that uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to really explore our psyches together in this, uh, you know, this format. It's, it's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. You got immediately like NPR. I was like, ooh, this person is well educated. Uh, you were on our season one, episode four, which was the Scooby Doo's Mystery Town, and you're also. Season two, episode, oh, what was it? The, the last one we did, Tree. Um, yeah. So so you've been all up on this show. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like both of the episodes you've been on were kind of like uh, marked a change for the show, like within each season. Like Scooby-Doo's Mystery Town was just like, oh, now we know what we're doing. Like this is, it's all about, you know, like guest agency. And then when we got to the Tree one, it was a totally original idea where we were like, I like the idea of just kind of, I'm just burping something out. <laughs> I was like, that's such a good verb. I just I burped it out. I, I actually use burp a lot for a lot of different situations. It just means some kind of output, but it's it's very, very, it's like a fun kind of adventure timey, like just a cool way. It's like, instead of saying output, say burp, <laughs> you know, it's like burping it out, bro. You know it. <laughs> that's going to be a whole thing now. People are going to be like. Yeah, I have to, uh, I've got to burp out some homework later. And, uh... Hashtag burp it. <laughs> hey, Zane, say hi to the people. Hi to the people. <laughs> Perfect. I power to the people. Yeah. I wish them well. Oh, nice. I will be a benevolent dictator. <laughs> um... <laughs> Excellent acceptance speech. Thank you for that. <laughs> I'd um... like to thank the Academy for my <laughs> ultimate power. <laughs> And you might res- remember Zane from being on the Survivor All In episode, and also from his fantastic work on the Carton cast. Uh, thank you. I'll let Wendell go first this time because I think I went last time. Wendell, <laughs> hello, hello to all you listeners out there. Um, thank you for having us back, Andrew. It really is a pleasure to be here. And hello to everyone out there. I mean, we are the guys from Side to Sam Theater. I will let we'll talk in a moment. I am Wendell. I am one <laughs> half of this beautiful brain we call Sideshow, and <laughs> um, yeah, we write Halloween music every year. Uh, we appeared on this show recently uh, to talk about uh, Green Hill Manor, our third album, which is all based around a theme park, um, so we are a perfect fit for this podcast and can't wait to talk more about it. And yes, I am Will, and I am the left side of the Sideshow brain, I guess, or the right <laughs> side, I don't know. I don't know how we'd figure that out, but uh, yeah, it's an honor to be back. Uh, we had a blast on the last Amusement Sparks episode that we were on, and uh, yeah, it's really cool to be able to come back and, and continue the fun. Visit the world of your favorite Disney afternoon cartoons. Travel by boat, plane, or molecular manipulator to explore Gummy Glen, Duckburg, Cape Suzette, and St. Canard. There's something for everyone in the Tooniverse, from ropes courses to roller coasters, to solving mysteries and flying with the latest VR technology. Live the magic of after-school cartoons anytime you please at the Disney Afternoon Tooniverse. My friend Tyler had a really cool idea. was like, during those transition parts, when you're switching from one small part of the park to a different one, we should have like commercials playing during that area. So it's like a commercial break switching between the shows. <laughs> <laughs> because this animation block, you know, they're aired back to back to back with just a commercial in between. So it'd be kind of funny if there's like a, you know, there's like a chip uh vending area and so like you hear a commercial for chips as you're walking by and then you hear like a commercial for like toys and there's a toy store right there and then you get to the next area it'd be kind of fun if we set it up almost like we could set up um with like a time theme to it like this area of the park is the four o'clock area and then this area is 4 30 and then based on the animation oh, block yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're blocked oh yeah. my gosh that's so fascinating that'd be weird but it'd be kind of fun if there's like that a is- specific progression to it That is interesting because that's also something that I picked up on when I was listening to the episode. There was like talk about like the transition between the different areas. Mm -hmm. And I I can't remember exactly. But like at one point it was like, oh, like transitioning from Gummy Glen into like the city. And like, is there like a ride or like some way of getting you from one place to the other? Yeah. And 
I thought that that was so fascinating because, uh, humble brag, I was in <laughs> Orlando th- this past week. Oh, I know. Uh, That's awesome. If anybody wants to kiss my hand, uh, you can find me. <laughs> I did both. I did Disney and Universal. Mm-hmm. And I exited Harry Potter, which was basically the only thing I cared about <laughs> at the time. And I looked around Universal and it was, you know, there was like a slight bummer factor, like being like, oh, there's Simpsons land, there's New York, there's mm-hmm. uh, Men in Black, you know, like. It, yeah, it's not connected. There's no there's no com- combining like connection between the things. It's right. Yeah. Even though like when you're in, I think Harry Potter does it the best because it, it walls you off. It's a mm-hmm. citadel fundamentally. Yep. And so, like, you can't really see anything else, so you can kind of have that immersive experience. Mm -hmm. But I I did like that idea of transitioning and making the transitions, uh, which you said it in the podcast, and now you've said it specifically now. Mm -hmm. Like, like really creating, like, a nice transition so that you're not at one point just, like, standing and being like, oh, there's that ride and there's that ride. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing, you know the Hulk from Poseidon's Adventure. Right, right. That kind of messes up the immersion factor. But yeah, did you have anything you wanted to change or, or like, renovate about what we talked about in this specific episode? Uh, the only thing that uh, I also have to add was the gummy bears thing. You guys talked about a zip line course, and the only thing I had to add to that was not only is it a zip line course, it's also a bungee attached to the zip line. Whoa. So you're not actually like zipping through it. You're <gasps> bouncing. Whoa. Through it. That's a really fun idea. Combining a zip line with a bungee. Yeah. That's so you're going crazy. through this like obstacle course and then you're, you know, like beforehand, they give you some gummy berry juice or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course. No, your idea is awesome. That sounds really fun. I kind of want to yeah. just try that in my backyard. Like. Just get some elastic and hang it from a zip line. That sounds great. Cool. Is there anything else you want to add to the Tooniverse? There could be a cool, like, aerial stunt show, like, oh, a la Blue Angels that you could see over a lake or something. Yeah, that'd be really cool, especially if you stylize the, the vehicles to look like ones from the shows. I feel like you could have a really cool Darkwing Duck stunt show. Oh, heck yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. I love that. And he's got all those gadgets. Like, you could have all kinds of excuses for, like, why is there a guy dangling from that you know, helicopter and just a duck gadget. No big deal. Did you have any specific thoughts about this one? Do you have memories about this specific cartoon animation block? I know you and your brother talk about cartoons a lot. <laughs> you know, it's weird how much of a blind spot this is. Cause mm-hmm. like, Oh, we run a cartoon podcast and these are some of the biggest cartoons from like late eighties, early nineties. And I just have seen like none of them. <laughs> <laughs> I've I mean, seen Darkwing Duck. Mm-hmm. That was one of your early episodes, wasn't it? Yeah, that was like the worst audio ever. <laughs> I, I will lay out a challenge right now to Gary. I I dare you to convince me that these are excellent shows. Wow. The gauntlet Laying has been grown. Dang. Holy moly. Uh, Gary, if you're out there, oh my gosh. Wow, how are you going to No report? disrespect. <laughs> I, I love Gary. No, you're totally um, right, I, though. I, I feel like most people have much more fondness in their hearts for the Disney animated features of of this era, you know, starting in the late eighties going in through the mid nineties, that was like a, a huge boom for the animated features. Um, but yeah, but then again, there is, there is a certain maybe alternative crowd that's really into Disney afternoon programming block. Like that you, being said, I yeah. like the idea of a theme park based on them just because those, those cartoons are so kinetic. Um, but they're still fairly grounded. Like, you know, it's people jumping around and like going on rope swings and going into boats and trains and planes and stuff. It's not like superpowers. Yeah, well said. It is very kinetic. And as opposed to like a feature film where there has to be a big overall plot with, you know, uh, character development, and all the important tenets of a successfully animated feature, they kind of have it's it's a lot more cartoony instead of an animated feature. You know what I mean? Like. Uh, every episode is more about like wacky adventures and like a lot of side characters making return visits. It's more of an ensemble kind of show. The fun is the primary purpose, and that's what lends itself to an amusement park. I, I think what I like uh, about it is the perspective, because mm. a lot of these shows have sort of a top-down, you know, you can see the entire setting and their place inside of it. So the idea of like a virtual reality cockpit Ooh. Where you where you fly around and like can 
like with live stream of the park and uh-huh. like see what everyone's up to. That's amazing. It's not not in a creepy spy <laughs> way, but just <laughs> yeah, that'd be really cool. Even if it's just kind of like um, you know, maybe there is a track way up high of cameras that can kind of move around the ring, so you can. It's like changing your perspective in relation to what you're doing with the controller. You know, if you push the controller to go north, the little camera up on the little pulley system way above the park moves in a north direction. So it looks like you're actually moving. There's absolutely so much story that would just be crawling around this park, I think, because... Oh, Easter eggs everywhere. Easter eggs everywhere, because there's so many characters in all of these. You know, like, (laughs) like if you wanted to list all of the characters from Aladdin, you could do that really easily. But like, if you want to list all the characters from... DuckTales, it's going to take you forever. You're going to have to call Gary and he'll like fill you in on all those like obscure characters that you had forgotten about. Um, so I think that there's a lot of potential for for kind of obscurity, obscure like hidden stories and just story being told all over the place. And it can be in really short bursts as well. Um, those series lend themselves well to a short episodic adventure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So those can happen on the course of every single ride. It can be its own separate adventure. It wouldn't have to be. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I think the that forced perspective that you mentioned, Andrew, I think well, that, that's just very Disney anyway. So that the idea of, of shrinking in size is, is fascinating. It's what fascinates me about this park. I think one thing that was true for um, all the, the episodes that you did this season and particularly this one was just the technological aspects and the techno- technological potential of each park. And I think that's what I yeah. liked about this one. I like the idea of, of changing, not necessarily changing size, but it feels as such when, when you enter each land. I think that that is something that could be, could be uh, you know, taken to just a, a huge level and i'm actually surprised that it hasn't been done already maybe they're working on it so <laughs> this need this park needs to be made now um but yeah, yeah. I, I think at least for for this park technological aspects but also i i like the idea of all the the transport that you have you know the um the vehicles the the vr cockpit that they mentioned i think it's something could something else could be done with that but at the same time incorporating that force perspective into one of the rides or the attractions as opposed to just like a a quote-unquote land by itself and i i look at everything as storytelling especially in a park one land has to flow into the next at the same time as have contrast i don't know how i'm gonna follow that but (laughs) add to it (laughs) that was cool yeah (laughs) Yeah, this is what I deal with on a daily basis, ladies and gentlemen. So, <laughs> Well, I think for DuckTales, and this is just me being selfish more than anything else because I'm, I'm a huge DuckTales uh, fan from way back when I was a kid. I'd love to see an indoor swimming pool, but kind of that where the, where, the, where the indoor area sort of recreates Scrooge McDuck's vault. Somehow, some way through projection effects or, you know, I mean, it's Disney, so they'll, they'll find a way. But you can dive into his money vault. Of course, it's water because you don't want to, you know, hurt the kids or whatever. But uh, I think that would be awesome. I think that would just be my childhood fantasy, like, you know, plus to 100. So I always wanted to see what it was like to swim in just a pool full of coins. That seems so awesome. I love that one. It's got my, like, nostalgia going pretty great. Um, but I was thinking maybe for the, the walls and the bottom of the pool, they could have like a lenticular image of coins. So it looks, you know, depending on what angle you're standing at, the coins kind of glimmer like they would in real life. And then you could also like on the surface of the water have like lasers measuring how, how displaced the water is. So, you know, if someone does a cannonball, it would play a sound effect of like coins getting like scattered everywhere. Whereas if someone just kind of does a little splash, then it'll play like a coin, a sound of coins like shuffling around. Like it would, it would play different sound effects depending on how much you're messing around with the coins. That'd be really fun. You basically just uh, pitched it perfectly. Well, thank you, Will. And uh, while I'm redoing my audio here, I've got one more thing to add to this park. Um, I had an idea of basically experiencing the difference in scale between like the humans and like Chip and Dale. I thought it'd be really cool if in one part of the park you go into a regular store in like Duckburg, for example, where everything is, you know, human scale. It's like a regular shop. Uh, maybe it even sells souvenirs. But then later in the park, when you're in the, the Chip and Dale area where you're really small, you go back in, you go into um, 
a very similar looking shop except your Chip and Dale size. So everything is huge. But it looks like the exact same shop. Like the same merchandise is on the shelves. It's just blown up to huge size. So you get to experience it from Chip and Dale's perspective. And then another time in the day, you get to experience it from the human's perspective. And you can see like, oh my gosh, look back there behind the counter. There's that little door that we entered when we were Chip and Dale size. I think that'd be so much fun. I like the idea of having a perspective of two different sides, you know, and, and not just that, but for the whole family, like the idea of adults remembering what it's like to be smaller and children's, ch yeah, I mean, ch I think children dream of that. I mean, <laughs> if you look at any of these, um, any animation or cartoon, Dragon Ball Z, pick, pick any one. It's all about becoming bigger and more powerful, and more, you know, you know, <laughs> so it's, that's interesting.